Hello Kerbal Space fans, this is Ra, and uh, today we are making, of course, another Kerbal Space program video, but here is the finished product of the SSTO that I've been working on. So this is already in orbit, and it's already on a good intercept course with the space station. And as you can see, the majority of this gray tank is still full. Um, I burn more oxidizer than liquid fuel, as you often do when you take something into space with a bunch of dedicated liquid fuel tanks. The good thing about this is there is quite a bit of liquid fuel left over so that I can power uh, it down and land it at the runway if, for example, my deorbit burn puts me shallow or anything like that. She is pretty maneuverable. I figured out what um, broke on it last time and it had to do with the hoses. I um, have a lot of different tanks, you know. These four that are on the outside and these four that are in here and these connect to this and this one's not working etc etc and I think I messed something up in the hosing which is why the rockets cut out even though there was plenty of fuel left um, yeah the the hoses are in here somewhere but anyway also move the headlights a little bit so this is basically uh, my first uh, attempt at a air quote heavy SSTO the majority of the ones I made have normally been pretty small. Um, as I went over last time, well, there's a station. As I went over last time, eight turbojets, four nukes, RCS, a lot of control surfaces. So let's go ahead and get this docked, and then I'll go and show you guys what it looks like on takeoff. So now that I see that one right there. I'm fairly certain I can put it on that port right there. So let's find out. So we're going to want to come in high and to the left. And as soon as, in, as soon as it lets us select that docking port as our target. This is identical to the other space station I blew up. Um, it's basically a single launch station. It it gets up here by itself. It gets up here full of fuel, but with no crew. It is uh, automated. Uh, let me know if anybody wants more information on how to make a single shot, shot space station. It's basically crew quarters, a couple of big solar panels, um, eight docking ports, and that's about it. Um, if you notice, Around here, there isn't a big, huge spent booster. I have a trick f for getting rid of the booster once I deliver it, because that station, as it stands there, has a has no control. It has no um, boosters. It has no RCS. It has no uh, engines. It's basically dead in space, as most space stations are. Well, actually, that's completely inaccurate. The ISS has a bunch of, of boosters, because it's on an unstable orbit. So they don't correct the orbit all the time. It would re-enter the atmosphere and kill everybody. But back to Kerbal Space Program. The All my landing gear is pointed backwards, so I had to actually add headlights. Um, especially if you're planning on docking anything on the night side. If you can't see what you're docking at, you're going to get in trouble. The other one of these that I built, this was version 2, so to speak. I made it with the new engines. And man, that didn't work. They were um, way unstable. They'd cause this thing to wibble and wobble all over the place. So I went back to the good old RCS. And since I have four of these tanks, after I dock, I'll still have tons of RCS left if I need to top off the RCS tanks on the space station. There we go. We did get to do some night side stuff. So very important, especially on a ship this big, to come straight in. Because if you bounce off of it, it's going to look a little bit like that that last video where I was trying to dock onto the pod itself and it would fly all over the place. Because uh, the space station's mass isn't that much smaller than this craft's mass. I mean bigger. It is bigger, but not a whole lot bigger. 
So this one can bump it off of a trajectory or put it on a spin, and I really don't want that. So I want to line it up really good and just do this once. This comes straight in and attach. So when I'm pointing straight in, I just put my prograde right on the one that shows where my ship is going. Of course, that's going to align to the target. You see, I'm not quite straight in. So there we go. Am I straight up and down? Not really. Like that. Okay. So I'm going to move left a little bit and down a little bit. This is, doesn't really make much of a difference, but I also want to make sure that their planes are aligned. That's mostly so that my wings don't get in the way of anything else that I want to dock up here later. Because this thing does have a lot of docking ports. So the pink and the yellow are pretty aligned. I can put the green on there too. And just let it gently coast its way in. Maybe a little faster because the 3 meters per second is going to take all day. Well, that would have been a huge mistake. Okay. Still feel a little high. See, it does have the mass to sort of bump the station, but there we go. So... I'm fairly certain that with this big old tank that it has here, it has a larger mass than the orange, than, I mean, than the SSTO. But not much. I mean, you can see <laughs> um, with the wingspan and whatnot, even though I know that this thing's heavier than this thing, it doesn't look it. And it does want to sort of spin from the impact of the of the tanker. So to my subscriber that asked for this, take that into consideration. If it's a tiny little station like this one, that's basically just a four-man refueling depot with a solar panel, a bunch of docking ports. Um, be real careful when you dock or else you're gonna fling your station to hell and back and get it going in a spin. And if you make it like mine that doesn't really have anything on there to stop the spin, you can be in a lot of trouble unless you of course cheat and just do time acceleration that stops the spinning of whatever. But anyway, let's go back to the Space Center and let's talk a little bit more about the staging and how to fly this thing. Okay. So here she is. Right. So the atomic rockets are action group to the spacebar. What that allows us to do is you can do like a scramble ignition. You don't have to worry about it firing the rockets when you stage to, to start all the turbojets. Because the staging turns them on, but the toggle command turns them back off. So when you hit spacebar, the, 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 the rockets don't turn on at all. Only the, only the, the turbojets. Now, these two are a little lower than they should be. See, that's, the, that's about the center of mass right there, a little bit below this center spot. And these engines are below. This is to give it some kind of like uh, mechanical lift. It's, it's gonna, the plane is going to want to keep its nose in the air the faster you go. Or the, the higher up you are. Which is something that I've had a problem with with the heavier SSTOs. That you get up into where the atmosphere is light and the thing wants to come back down again. Now, I've seen other um, SSTO makers address that by putting mechanical lift on top of the of the SSTO in the shape of like wings that are specifically angled to give it lift, but I prefer this. Now, this does have one side effect because the first two engines that are hotkeyed to shut down are these two. So when you shut them down in the upper atmosphere, watch out because your nose will want to dip. You have to correct that manually. The um, action groups are as follows. So the stage, of course, has all the, all the, the atomic rockets. Group 1 has these first two. 
It says you're flying and the, you're up high, you know you're above like 22, 23 kilometers. You're going to start stalling out. So these are the first that you turn off. Keeping all the intakes open, of course. Second are these two. Of course, trying to get the ones that are furthest out. Because when one of these flame, flame out, if, if one of these were to flame out, it would send you into a spin because they're so far out, they have more leverage. Then the third group is these two on the side. Now once you turn off the third group and you have your rockets burning and these two engines burning, group four, you're pretty much good because since these engines are one on top of the other and there'll be two engines running off all this slew of intakes, they'll run well up into the 40s. And when one or the other does flame out, they won't flame out in a way that is um, asymmetrical side by side. So nothing will really happen. You won't really notice. It won't tend to twist your your plane around at all. Uh, it'll it usually is the top one that flames out first. So it actually just gives you a little bit of, of lift and keeps pushing you up. So I normally let these two here burn till they're till basically they both flame out, or till one flames out and the other ones pushing so softly that it's not really even doing anything. Probably the drag from the intakes is a bigger problem, so I shut down the two engines and shut down the intakes. Alright, so let's recap. These are one, these are two, these are three, these are four, and those are the spacebar. The other action groups that I have are, of course, group five. Turns on and shuts off all these intakes here on the side. That's because I don't like to have them all open in the lower atmosphere. I don't, don't need them because they create more drag. And group six is these, which are the ones that I have open from the get-go. There's three on each side. These are enough to keep all eight engines running well up above about 14 kilometers. When you hear about 15 kilometers, that's when you'll start to hear the whine of the engines change and know that it's time to open these side ones. So let's show you guys how to get it in the air. I'm not going to do the entire flight. It takes like 10 minutes to get it in space. It's a little slow. All right. So computer controls, lights on. Let's check out the fuel. Let's hit 5 to close the intakes I don't need. Give it the full throttle and hit space bar. As you see, the rockets didn't fire, only the engines. The amount of control surfaces that it has on the bottom let it get in the air real easy. Of course, you don't want to pull back on it too hard and rub your engines off on the ground. This one has pretty good power, even for the weight it has, so I put it about 55 degrees up. Of course, put the landing gear away. And yeah, she climbs real nice and high, real quick. So like I was saying, you want to hit 5 and go to full air mode at about 14 kilometers. When you're hitting about 19 kilometers, a little before 20, like 18 and a half, 19 kilometers, that's when you're going to probably want to drop your uh, angle of attack to about 25 degrees and pick up more speed than altitude. Once you have to shut down the first engines, I would recommend almost immediately go into the nukes. Remember that these don't use much fuel. With the nukes burning and at about 15 degrees angle of attack, you'll pick up the majority of your speed to get in the space. After that, your engines will start dying out, so you'll shut them down two at a time. The two top ones, the two side ones, and you'll stay in this configuration for the majority of the transition into space. Once you're above about 45 kilometers, these two are already doing absolutely nothing. So what I first do is shut down 5 and 6 so that they both flame out and then turn off the engines by hitting 4. And then you're just on the nukes all the way out. This will get you in orbit and will actually leave you with so much fuel that you could probably refuel the... Um, a space station and come back down under power and fly around. I mean, you have the majority of this left over once you're already in space. With a plane that's got uh, atomic engines, uh, atomic um, rockets like this thing does, 
That's enough to do anything. I mean, you could probably fly this thing to Minmus and back after refueling and then land it. Now, as you see, is she is pretty maneuverable, and she doesn't start losing a lot of altitude when I turn on her side. Of course, I'm going to die now. Come on. There we go. Okay. That's due to these. These ones on the side here uh, make up for how weak these are, because those really aren't enough. I mean, they work, but they're not enough to keep this thing sideways. As you can see, got a little wobble there. And even though you might think that four sets of landing gear for playing this side might make it wobbly or whatever, it isn't. I've, um, when I was testing the other models, particularly the model with the, the new engines, the new little RCS rocket ones, I keep forgetting what they're called, they're Cerner engines or something like that. Uh, I brought two of these down, and, uh, still with the tank full, and I was still able to land them fine. I was able to do the re-entry and glide down. Um, yeah, it was easy. Let me try to bring this one back. Due to the size of it, and the amount of wings that it has, and the position that they are, she is touchy. I mean, you don't want to um, th throw it around too much. You're not going to do a lot of stunts in a plane this size. Might get wheels down, yes they are, okay, good. Yep, it even glides with this much fuel on board. And of course brakes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Well, they survived. So, uh, yeah. Easy on the brakes when you stop at a full fuel load, which isn't there anymore. And uh, to my subscriber that asked for this, this is how to fly it. I will be finding some way to email the craft file to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, thank you everybody for watching, and thank you for the subscribers that keep coming. Every morning I check my phone, and there's three or four... Gmail th from YouTube saying that a new subscriber has signed up and it's like the best good morning you could ever have to know that two or three more people are watching my videos. So again, thank you everybody who subscribed. Thank you again, Veils, for mentioning me in your channel and fly safe unlike me.